Hey guys and welcome to this edition of Project TJ. Uh, haven't done a Jeep video for a while so I just thought while I'm waiting on some parts for the camper I'd slot one of these in. Now if there's something I get asked more than anything with regard to this Jeep is where do I get my parts from? And if there's anything I see more in my country, in this case Australia, it's guys saying these things are shit boxes. A lot of that is because of where they get their parts and what those parts are. Unfortunately in this country, Jeep Australia either charges an arm and a leg for parts for these, never have them in stock. As such, you see a lot of guys uh, that have bought, and case in point, radiators. I don't know how many things I see on social media where the post is, I've had a radiator blow from my 2J, this is my fourth aluminium radiator that I've bought off eBay. One. Don't buy the radiators off eBay. Two, the aluminium ones, unless they're really high quality PWRs or the like, are absolute crap. And in an off-road situation, they will crack. So, with radiators, go back to a Mopar radiator. Plastic top, plastic bottom. You will not have any issues. Um, it's probably last, the original ones probably lasted 10 or 15 years. Why do you need something else? You don't. But anyway, I just thought, Let's go through the vehicle and I'll just explain where I've bought my parts from and why. This is my Metal Cloak bumper. I purchased this directly from Metal Cloak in the US. Um, I had to wait six weeks or something, but you can't buy these anywhere else. I really don't know if there's a local guy, but again, because the TJs are getting older, stock levels would be, if there was a local guy selling them, they'd more, be more based towards a JK item um, or JL item. Whereas um, with TJs, it's not worth their while having stock. So again, direct from Metal Cloak, I had to wait for it to be produced and shipped out. Everything I get on the vehicle is shipped via air, so I'm not waiting six to eight weeks, but that's where I got this from. And it's highly customizable through Metal Cloak's website, and I, I'm so happy with this bumper, it's just not funny. The worn winch. Again, another high quality item purchased through ARB locally. Um, anything ARB I find is better if I purchase locally and as I'm a member of a four wheel drive club, I get a four wheel drive club discount through ARB. And that brings the cost down again. Um, suspension, the rear bar and the winch have all been purchased through ARB with a club discount and I've been really happy with all of those items my eBay lights. Now they've come from a local eBay seller and they're a Chinese knockoff and yes they go against the grain of everything I had have said but I really haven't had an issue with them. I have been pulled over for a random breath test by a policeman a couple of times and they've questioned me about them however when they look at the dot SAE -E logos on them they sort of have a bit of a grumble and let me go. I'm more than happy with the lights. I don't have any issues because I've got them angled down with other road users. However, at some point, they're one of the items that I may upgrade again. But at this point, very happy with the lights and they're so superior than the Jeep lights, it's not funny. My AEV rims. Now, these aren't available anymore. Um, I purchased an end of stock line from a local retailer, Jeep Connection in Victoria. Um, these things I love to bits. They're a TJ specific fitment. I don't need wheel adapters or anything for them, but they're just not available anymore. My KM3 tyres. I get those locally. I generally suss out the local tyre guys to see how much they are. Sometimes they've got a special on. Um, Costco now sell Booth Goodrich. They're worth a look. Tempe tyres parallel import into Australia. Um, and I generally find you can't beat their prices. And when you go to the local guys, they'll say, oh, they're parallel importing, I can't even touch their prices. However, be worried about warranty issues. I've never really had a warranty issue with a tyre before. They're all made at the same place. So I'm more than happy to take the punt. Um, and you're more, probably saving about 100 bucks a tyre sometimes, depending on size. So that's where I go for tyres. Now, the flares and the like, and a lot of other stuff on this vehicle have been purchased through Quadratech in the US. 
Um, I buy a lot of stuff through them because one, they stock a wide range of product. Um, two, they have most things in stock. Um, and three, I can get a shipping quote then and there. Whereas um, Morris 4x4 and the like, uh, and fourwheeldrive.com, I have to email them and they en then email, email me back a shipping quote. And that's a damn nuisance because I want to buy it and I want to buy it now. <laughs> so, but yeah, a lot of stuff's been through Quadratech. Um, occasionally there'll be a glitch and something will be said it's in stock but it's not. I generally find that if you email them a couple of days after, if it hasn't shipped, um, they can give you either a time frame when it will ship uh, or you can cancel the order. And I've, I've found them really good to deal with. Occasionally you have a glitch, but I think you have a glitch with anyone. Um, and with the, the vendors they use to ship, you generally find you've got something between um, five and nine working days. Uh, with shipping stuff into Australia too, I generally tend to try and keep the amount under the thousand dollars if I can. Um, there's been some GST changes and uh, a lot of vendors are now moving over into charging your GST on checkout. Um, however, those that don't, if you keep it under the thousand dollars, they seem to come straight through. That's my experience anyway. Now my Corbo suits, I bought those through CJ Pony Parts in the US. Now they're mainly uh, a Mustang shop however they do also do a lot of jeep stuff they say they only do jk stuff but if you look through this their listings there's a lot of tj stuff there too um, i like them because i knew i'd get slugged um, import tax and gst and they actually put it all on the shipping quote before i i checked out of the place so it was one payment and when i compared them to other vendors um, whilst the other vendors were cheaper, they didn't include GST and shipping charges and um, import charges. So, in this instance, I probably saved about three or four hundred dollars, uh, and that's a reasonable amount to save. Uh, again, there was a weight on these because they had to come directly from. Normally, they drop ship from Corbo, but because they were uh, an export item to me. They had to drop ship from Corbo to CJ Pony Parts, who then shipped them to me. So there may have been a two week wait before they shipped. So it may have been three to four weeks all up before I, I got them after order. But these are the things you have to do. My best top was through Quadratech. Um, the local vendors out here, whilst they do sell this type of best top, they don't sell it in the upmarket material. Um, and again, it's mainly because TJs are getting old in the tooth and they'd have to keep stock, whereas in the US, there's a lot more of them. Now with my leather clad steering wheel, which is still gorgeous, so if you can still get them, get them. Again, if you go back through my videos, uh, there's a link to the guy in Poland that was doing them. Um, I can only say good things about it. Now with any think mechanical, I tend to get those through Rock Auto. Um, I find that prices are probably half of what it costs to buy locally. Most of the time, if I can, I can get a genuine part, um, and they have most things in stock. They're the go-to place if you own an older vehicle like this, um, because you can just keep it in tip-top shape for not a lot of money. Um, parts are here within the week, and they stock a whole heap of stuff, not just Jeep. So a really good place to keep in mind. Um, there's a few different things I've bought. Uh, the S-Pod unit. I had troubles getting it from S-Pod in the US uh, and I ended up getting it from Jeep Connection locally in Victoria. Uh, it was a little bit cheaper. I couldn't get exactly what I wanted, which was a bit of a concern because I do like to get what I want if I'm gonna buy it. Um, I haven't had any issues with it. I hope I don't. We'll just leave it at that. There's a few smaller vendors I've used on things like this, like the seat bushes, um, and I've got a video for that with a link to them. Uh, I just ship through them, more than happy with the service and the product. Now my local go-to guys are SBR Off-Road in WA and Jeep Connection in Victoria. I've had really good experiences with both of them. I've found both of their prices cost-effective when compared to everyone else and that is something you need to do, compare it to everyone else uh, importing them over. Uh, I hear a lot of guys saying, oh I would import the parts but they want to charge me more for shipping than the part. Go and have a look at what you can buy it locally 
and more than likely you'll find that it's cheaper anyway. Um, or bundle up a few things and bring them over and you'll find it's more than cost effective. Well that's, that's my outlook anyway. The only trouble I find with the local guys is because these things are getting a bit older they don't stock the amount of parts in that they normally would and sometimes they could give you a two or three month timeline. Um, in which case I generally want the stuff in a couple of weeks so I just order it from overseas. So that's basically where I get most of the stuff from the vehicle from. Uh, there's a few smaller vendors and eBay purchases, but they're my go-to people. So I hope that's helped you out, guys. That's all for today, and we'll see you next time on Project TJ. Bye now.